HBCU Digest, welcome back. Uh, our next guest is here with a very, very credible message of if you have a dream, an HBCU can do nothing but help you get there, so don't stop believing in it. She is 2017 Hampton University graduate, Khadija Doso. Beautiful African name, not Doso, Doso. <laughs> and she is the principal of Doso Beauty LLC and the recent winner of $250,000 uh, from a campaign from uh, Virginia's own Pharrell Williams, investing in Black and Latinx companies. Uh, to make a difference here in society and particularly in our community. So Khadija, it is an honor to have you on, sis. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm super excited. This is this is a, you know, obviously a big deal because it's a big amount. Mm -hmm. um, but for you, it, it, is it is it the, the realization of something you always visualize for you and your company? Because this is a dream you've had for a long time. Absolutely. Um, or is it is it is it kind of like, whoa, this is a surprise. I didn't expect this coming. So a little bit of both, right? Like, so super excited because this is something that has been a dream since I was 10 years old. I've always known that I wanted to own an organic beauty empire, just didn't really know how it was going to happen or when it was going to happen. Um, very, very surprised, but not surprised that we won the grand prize for the HBCU Black Ambition Prize. Um, because I had a feeling, you know, that something was going to change. Like 2021 has been an amazing year for Doso Beauty. And like, this was just like the icing on the cake. It's like, it sealed the deal and let me know that like, hey, like this is the purpose that you're supposed to be walking in. And like, you need to take this opportunity to go forth and prosper. So let's let's go back to the beginning, right? You said you you visualize this for yourself at age 10. Mm -hmm. um, you obviously go on and, and attend uh, Hampton, um, which isn't just college. Uh, but it's a it's an elite competitive institution. Right. You grew up in Philly. How did you go from Philly to Hampton? And how did you set a course such that college was not an obstacle to your dream, but an asset? Because a lot of people say, you know, I, I'm going to school and I know that's the right thing to do, mm -hmm. but they feel like it's something that gets in the way of their dream. How did you kind of reverse engineer that prospect? For sure. Um, so even if we take it a step further, like, I was born and raised in West Philly, as you mentioned, um, but my grandfather, he migrated from South Carolina to Philadelphia in order to be an entrepreneur, to be a masonry, right? And he, he did construction and built some of the most pivotal buildings all over the city. So I grew up around entrepreneurs. My uncle Marshall was actually um, a graduate of Hampton University as well, too. And so obviously when I was a junior, he's like, listen, we got to go to an HBCU tour. We got to visit Hampton. That's my alma mater. And I stepped on campus and like literally one of my friends, he was a freshman at the time, but we're friends now. He's like, hey, are you a freshman here? And I was like, no, but I will be next year. And so I was just super excited to to be there and to be to go from from Philly where, you know, the crime rate was high. And like I didn't see a whole lot of positivity as much in my community or college educated folks that were in my immediate circle. I was excited to see a, a sea of beautiful black people. Right. That were, you know, trying to be successful and like that came from various different backgrounds and various different, you know, origins. I was excited to say, hey, like this is a this is a great opportunity um, for me to learn. And so um, going to Hampton would have never stifled my ability to build Doso Beauty, because like I said before, um, I didn't really know how I was going to start it. But I did know that I needed the formal education to understand how to build a business. Right. Even after I graduated from Hampton, I didn't just say, hey, well, I'm going to start Doso Beauty. I said, no, like, let me go into consulting so I can understand the foundations of the largest big four companies um, in the beauty industry, understand how they really navigate their systems. How does their operations happen? And I can duplicate that and modify and take bits and pieces from each of the different companies who are doing great things to create my own empire myself. So um you know, I'm super excited and grateful for Hampton because that formal education, that network um, and that confidence that it helped to just reinforce and instill in me is what helped me to build the business. Honestly, let's talk about it a little bit. So, you know, obviously Hampton is one of our, our, our most esteemed HBCUs. But can you give us any particulars about how that network and how that academic training specific examples of how that works for an entrepreneur? Um, because I think people associate college would come out and get a job. Mm -hmm. And I come out and start one where you can create jobs. So how does that network and how does that that infrastructure of training work to do something like that? Right. So um, number one, that network 
like allows you to have a larger net worth than you know that supports you right a lot of times people go to business school um that are from you know pwis and that's so amazing and 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 awesome right but like they go to to b school to really see what their network is going to be going to be right or how they can build their network with people that don't look like them so going to a hbcu with people that look like me with people that i knew that were in my corner and supporting me and my dreams helped me to kind of give a bit more structure and guidance that i would have if i went to a pwi right um i have my project where i said you know i was going to build you know doso beauty organic empire in my finance class, right? In my personal finance class. And so even having that foundation and like building my first business plan, that was pivotal because that mm-hmm. helped me to sit down and think about like, what is this business that I want to build? I know I want to do organic beauty, but like, what is the financials going to look like, right? How do I kind of want to structure it? Is it B2B to B2C or is mm-hmm. it just B2B or D2C, right? And so understanding that nomenclature as well too, and going to HBCU, being able to have access to my professors that are also entrepreneurs as well as professors, as well as have worked in corporate America, helped to give me a lot of perspective of like, hey, there is a guided place, right? You go to college and you get a job, but you really can do whatever you want to do because you now have access to all of the tools and all of the resources that most people don't. You're out of school in 2017. Um, you know, obviously you're in, you're fully immersed in your business. Can you talk about one of or some of the darkest moments in trying to build one and how you persevered through that? Absolutely. Um, so I'll say after I graduated from Hampton, I went into uh, management consulting at one of the big four firms. Um, I had a terrible first project, whereas though um, one of my actual managers was like, prejudice, right? Just flat out prejudice. And um, she gave me hell, for lack of better terms. And so being fresh out of college and going and having that experience, I'm like, oh my gosh, like, what is my purpose? I mean, I pledged Delta, like I was the president of the Northern Atlantic Pre-Alumni Council, super involved in school. And so I go from that to like being at a job that I that's supposed to be a dream job. And I feel like I'm not doing well. I feel like I was in a really dark place. And so I ended up rolling off of that project, which is a consulting term for those that know. Um, And I was on the bench, which means that I was not assigned to a project for about four months. That was very, very difficult. In the midst of that, my grandmother, who was the most important person and still is the most important person to me in my life, passed away. Right. And so I had to persevere and say, you know, hey, like I could be in this funk. I could be in this state of depression for a long time. But you know what? Like one day I stayed up for three days straight. It was 72 hours. I'll never forget it. In February, when I started the business, I said, you know what? Like I need to make my grandmother proud. I need to make myself proud and feel like I'm myself all over again. And so I was able to pull myself out the mud because the eagerness to build this this empire, it literally just it kept me awake for 72 hours. You bootstrapped this business from the top. And there's a lot of us who have done that, um, meaning that you've you self-invested. Uh, you don't you didn't at one point have a lot of investment. You didn't have advertising. You didn't have seed funding. Mm-hmm. You did this all with savings and stuff. So for those of us who have done it, kind of explain that process to folks of, of bootstrapping and what it teaches you about managing a business and building one from the ground up. For sure. Yeah. I mean, like. Honestly, I didn't have that much savings saved up, right? I just decided, I'm like, you know what, Khadija, like, you know, you live in New York, like you pay extremely high rent, like, you know, you have a network here, but you have a network back at Hampton. So what's the first thing that you can kind of do? And so I always tell people, go back to your business plan to say, all right, cool. What, how can I begin this business with the lowest product, the lowest cost product that I'm going to make the most profit off of and the most margin off of it? For me, and the end fad was, um, mink eyelashes, right? And so I would get the mink eyelashes for a certain low cost and say, all right, I'm going to market it well. I'm going to have brand ambassadors that I, I, of people of some of my neos and my friends that I know that are on campus. And I'm going to say, all right, cool. We're going to put our return on investment, right? We're going to try to get our return on investment. Of course, when you first start a business, you know, you don't see usually see return ROI within the first three years. It's usually a deficit. Um, but bootstrapping without any help at all whatsoever, it teaches you to really be disciplined about 
um, your spending habits from a business perspective, but also from a personal perspective. How, how often are you ordering out, right? Versus like actually, you know, cooking, meal prepping, all of that, and so on and so forth. Um, lifestyle, right? Sometimes people, you know, people that I started off working with, we had this amazing job. They're like, oh, I want to get Equinox, you know, um, <laughs> right? And I'm like, I don't got Equinox money, honey. Like, so, you know, like the paycheck says one thing, after Texas says a whole nother thing. And then after I pay for my business expenses, that's completely different. And so um, even like choosing a healthy lifestyle and like making sure that you're being frugal about a lot of things, right? I chose to invest in myself and my business. I see that as in a full investment. So it would be times where as though I would pay for products before I paid my rent because I believed in myself that much, right? And you got to have a certain type of tenacity and hunger about that, right? Again, no no funding at all whatsoever within my first two years. It wasn't until actually the pandemic happened that, you know, I won um, $1,000 from the Facebook grant, right? They were supporting Black-owned businesses and giving us like free ad credit. And so that was the actual first time that I actually received funding um, from any any person at all whatsoever. And this is last year um, in 2020, started the business in 2018. And so, uh, you know, it was, it was difficult, but I think at the end of the day, it was so rewarding because it made me more intentional about the products that I was purchasing, knowing that like, hey, if this is my last thousand dollars that I had to give for the next two months into this business, I'm going to make it last, right? I'm going to make sure that I'm investing it correctly and say, all right, cool. What's my breakdown of like what I'm investing in um, as far as the products are concerned, as far as marketing is concerned, I need a website. I need to pay a web designer. I also need a graphic designer. So um, budgeting is super key when it comes to building a business in your when you're bootstrapping or even if you have an, an initial investment, because nobody's going to invest in you unless you have a flushed out plan. Mm -hmm. How many years did you have to skip uh, Hampton Homecoming saving up? Honey, <laughs> I went to the first one. I went to the first one because that was right before I started the business. But the second one, I was like, "Listen, I'm going to catch y'all in a couple." Of I ain't years. gonna make it. I'm going to catch y'all in a couple of years. I'm gonna go to something real local, or say, "Listen, I ain't got time. I can't pay for that flight right now." It's discipline. Inventory, it's discipline. Okay? Um, was, was the, the, the grant from Pharrell, the, the culminating moment, or was it part of a series for you? Like, have you had uphill moments and this was just the highest peak of them or was this the, the, the big peak and the only peak for you? Hmm. This, this was, um, a big peak for me, right? Definitely mm -hmm. life changing. Um, but I had several peaks before then. Right. Um, so we received a lot of press. And and what I really focus on when I encourage people who are in the e-commerce world is to really understand, become very well versed in search engine optimization, SEO. Right. So I have been bootstrapping with my my web designer about SEO from the beginning. Right. Even before Google was really, you know, as advanced and, and well thought out as it is now. And so um, I had already been able to garner press through my publicist um, and one of our most like important and super amazing um, articles that we have is from a really large and well-known publication called Madame Noir. It's a really mm -hmm. big, well-known um, beauty publication. And so if you search Google on Google, black owned braiding hair, if you search hypoallergenic braiding hair, Doso Beauty will be the first person to pop up, the first business to pop up in that article um, have received tens of thousands of views and direct link clicks through that one article, right? And so that was a moment that I said, wow, like I'm seeing all this website traffic. I'm still, although we get a lot of website traffic, I, I still have my Wix notifications on. So every time somebody comes to the website, I'm still looking like, where are they coming from? Okay, cool. Let's do those analytics and understand what's going on. How long are they staying on the website? And mm -hmm. so um, that was one of the first peak moments. Um, we also been uh, we'll reach out directly to by British Vogue, um, by British GQ, and we've been featured there. And I mean, um, the cherry on top was really just a black ambition, and and really speaking to Pharrell directly, and him being sincere and, and really saying like, "Hey, you were hand chosen, right? There were thousands of applicants, but like we chose you because we believe in you." That was a lot of reassurance that I felt like I needed to say, "Hey, I know I'm it." I know that this business is it. And my, my customers tell me that it's life changing, right? On a daily basis. You've changed my life. I haven't worn braiding hair, um, worn my hair in braids in 10, 15 years. Hey, I've decided to go natural because I can now wear braids, right? And mm. 
their confidence has changed. They're saying like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. I have a lot of male customers who use my beard products and are like, wow, like I never knew how to take care of my beard. I wasn't taught how to take care of my beard, right? I need good skincare. Your shea butter, I have eczema. It's changed my life, right? Like I have diabetes. I have diabetic, um, you know, customers who utilize the shea butter on their on their feet because of the neuropathy neuropathy, right? And it helps them. So I knew for a fact that my products were changing people's eyes when my customers were telling me. When Pharrell came back and said, hey, like we see what you see and what everybody else sees, that was just saying, all right, cool. We got to do this thing full time. We have to go full throttle. We got to really make sure that we're making a, a global impact in which we already are because our products are, you know, shipped around the world, sold around the world. So we're working on some really dope projects and trying to um, you know, garner and, and create jobs in Ivory Coast, which is where my father is from. That's where that funny name comes from. And so, you know, dealing directly with goods there, right? And like getting people jobs there and helping out with their, you know, ecosystem and all of their new eco-friendly initiatives and everything like that. That's that's what this is about. And this was already in the cards before I even had the idea of mm -hmm. building Doso Beauty. And that's the beauty, beautiful thing about it. You talked about, um, you know, your kind of your, your day gig. Uh, mm -hmm. that you've worked since, you know, prior to going full-time. Mm -hmm. talk, talk about that process of managing a nine to five or sometimes a nine to seven or nine to nine and then dedicating all your free time to building something. How do you, how did you press through that? And how would you advise young people coming behind you to do the same thing? So I was very intentional about going into consulting because I knew that I can go into multiple different industries and learn um, a lot of key components and key skills that I needed. Right. And so for me, consulting meant like that I could work with those top tier beauty projects. And so utilizing my day job. Um, I think it's, it was really important and still is important for me to take what I need from there to utilize for my business. I've always said that I wanted to make sure that like I was being intentional about understanding how to run a business, right? How do some of the beauty, the beauty clients run their business? But hey, I've, I've also been on supply chain um, companies and projects, whereas I'm learning about SKUs and about, you know, all of those different barcodes and, and, and all of that, those things and being in the consumer goods industry. On my for my business, I need that knowledge, right? I didn't know what a GS1 barcode was until I had that project. And so um, being intentional about learning key skills during your day job is extremely important. Um, and I think that sometimes people get in the weeds of like, I'm not doing exactly what it is that I want to do at my day job. So it's kind of off or not, right? And they get very discouraged. But I've, I've had a rough time, no lie, during my day job, right? I haven't been on a beauty project since 2019 and I run <laughs> a, a successful e-commerce beauty business. But that hasn't deterred me from saying, hey, I'm still going to take what I need from them in every other different aspect and utilize it towards my business. So um, I would just encourage people to stay encouraged. Right. And make sure that you're being very intentional about where you place your time at, um, the things that you're taking from each different experience at your day job um, or even you know, with your friends, right? And in, in your leisure time, what are you doing in your leisure time to help propel you and your business? You win this big grant. Uh, the expectation is, okay, big deluxe apartment in the sky in Manhattan <laughs> somewhere. You actually go back home to Philly from New York. Mm -hmm. You're taking some time away. Mm -hmm. What What is the what is the motivation behind it would seem to be kind of scaling back from it when you get mm -hmm. such a huge, a huge bump in the in the life of the company? Right. So was extremely intentional for a few reasons to come back to Philly. Number one, because of space. I was tired of living in a shoebox. I was living around, um, you know, 30 boxes, very large boxes of braiding hair in my two bedroom apartment. Had a nice little office in there, but it just wasn't I needed space. And so I knew that New York wasn't going to be a place that I could like, you know, have a space and look for an affordable warehouse and also expand. Um, but I needed to come back home to get rejuvenation and like get back to my roots. You know, like there's a sense of like grit about being here. And I mean, there's grit about New York, which is what I love. And I think I've done what I needed to do in New York. Um, but coming back home shows me like, hey, like the people need to see that you can come from West Philly, from an impoverished neighborhood, the hood. Right. You know, go to college, 
get a great job, and then come back and still be extremely successful. They needed to physically see me here and in their space and to speak to them and to connect with them in order to be motivated. Because I was fortunate enough to have mentors to see that I can make it out. Some people don't have that luxury. And so like, I have to put on for my city. I have to you know, be an example, right? I don't need to be fully immersed into all of the negative things that are happening. Um, you know what I'm saying? In the city, I mean, the crime rate is high and all the other stuff, but like they need to see that there's hope, right? And I'm the change that they need to see. Plug the website. And, and before we get out of here, mm -hmm. let people know the, the the one piece of advice, particularly college students, particularly HBCU students, mm -hmm. what's the biggest piece of advice that they could take from you that would get them on the path of success? But first, let us know where we can shop Okay. and, and, and then get into the advice for the young people. Okay, so you can shop with Doso Beauty on www.dossobeauty.com, dosobeauty.com. We also are available currently on walmart.com as well as amazon.com um, and soon come also.com. So a few different plugs there. You can find uh, literally Google Doso Beauty, again, D-O-S-S-O beauty.com or Doso Beauty in general. You can find us there. Um, I can't give one piece of advice, but I can give two, right? Okay. The first is that, um, your network is your net worth. So yep. while you're at your HBCU, understand that your board of directors and your initial investors and your, your initial supporters, you're garnering that community there. Be very intentional about your circle and who you surround yourself with, because they will help to propel you and you will help to propel them to be successful in your own right. Right. You got to remember that when you're building a business, you need a, a, a good board of directors or a trusted community. And there's a lot of other people that, you know, might not have your best intentions, but your your crew at your HBCU and at your college, it's going to be necessary. Right. Um, the second piece of advice is make sure that like you are creating a business plan um, initially. Right. But know that it is going to forever evolve. As you evolve as a person, as your business evolves and grows, your business plan should continue to evolve and you should change your goals and trajectories, right? Like I didn't know that I was going to 13.5x my business revenue in the first quarter of 2021. That's mind blowing, right? Like I didn't know that was going to happen. So that changed the, tra the trajectory of my business and how it was growing and how it was scaling. I didn't know I was going to win $250,000 from Pharrell Williams, right? But now I have to change and modify my business plan. So as, as you grow, um, continue to grow your, your, your business plan, but also continue to elevate your mindset too.